Three, two, one. You know what this is. It's a celebration. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Six Packs with X Packs. My name is Patrick. And I am Carl. And this. And we are. Oh, uh, yeah, we are CP P Travels. Travels. And this is episode number eight. Hmm. And what are we talking about today for episode number eight? Today, we're talking about not getting bamboozled. Basically, avoiding scams and general travel safety. Around the world, when you're traveling around the world. The, today's podcast, today's Six Packs with Expects, is brought to you by Heffen Weisenberg. Heffen Weisenberg. Heffen Weisenberg. Heffen Weisenberg. Heffen Weisenberg. Yeah, it's a, blonde, it's a premium blonde. Uh, is it German beer? I don't know, but it's made by Valentine's Bieber. Valentine's Shout out to all the believers out there. Really good beer. I got that Justin Bieber. Please believe it. Please believe it. Huh? And we are uh, also showing off our newest addition to our. CP Travel wear. No, uh, ladies, if you need a bag, that's stupid. We got these CP Travels. Tra- travel you don't bags. wear a bag like that. God bless America. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So How are we gonna be going? talking about travel safety? You talking about the, one of the most dangerous countries in the world? Which one? Huh? America. Nah, it's not dangerous. Only only be on the west side. For who? The west side. Not, of, no, America not dangerous for who? Everybody. Oh, Fine. for real? For, okay. We're not gonna talk about incarceration rates today. All right. Going right into it. So avoiding scams. Patrick, what are some of the scams that you've gotten into while traveling or that you've witnessed while traveling that first people of all, should know about? First of all, before we talk about scams, we need to give all, all due respect to the scammer on the most high, the fabulous Joan the Scammer. Joanne. Joanne the Scammer. Okay. Nobody knows who that is. Everybody knows. Everybody knows Joanne the Scammer. She's literally iconic, honestly. I have no idea what it is. Honestly, anyway, now t- tell us about some of the scams honestly, you've taken part with over the, like, been, been a part, ah, you've seen while traveling abroad. Are you asking me to talk about times that I've been scammed abroad? Yes. Okay, cool. All right. So, see, that's a bunch of different questions. I'm going to need you to rephrase it next time mm. so when we work on these things. Okay, so try, try your question again, please. So, scams, first of all, <laughs> first I want to put a travel advisor out there, right? So, we don't, we don't want to discourage anybody from traveling, right? Scams happen all over the world, whether it's your hometown, whether you're traveling to a new place, or whatever. You, there's a possibility for you to get scammed. What we want to t- talk to you guys about today is how to spot what a scam is mm, and, and how to avoid it. Avoid them as best as and possible. And how to make sure that scammer doesn't do that again or try you again, right? So, it's about being educated while traveling. So we're going to talk who to you about our experiences try? with scams. Who you, who you finna try? And, I bet it ain't me. I bet it ain't me. <laughs> and how to avoid getting scammed. And by doing that wherever you go, that's a great way to start. Now, so, if you do that everywhere you go, nobody's going to try and scam you because I'm, I'm probably going to go the opposite direction if you start doing that. But you're trying to avoid scams by going out. So let's think of a popular travel destination, uh, a place that we've been to uh, quite frequently, mm. Thailand. Bangkok Thailand. to be exact. Uh, I think one of the more common scams in Bangkok are the tuk-tuk scams, mm. right? So if you all don't know what a tuk-tuk is, tuk-tuk is a three-wheeled scooter type thing. Uh, it's got one wheel in the front, two in the back. It's like a trike, but it's got a little roof over the top. Uh, tuk-tuks are my third favorite method of transportation next to boats and whatever else I said the other day. Probably, I, I probably airplanes. Really, probably airplanes. Whatever, yeah, I like airplanes. Tattoo of one, but okay. Yeah. But yeah, well, I got the tattoo of the logo. Mm-hmm. Shout out to us. Uh, so yeah, uh, what they do with the Tuk Tuk scams is they will charge you extra cost. If you don't get this, I don't think I'm free to start sorry, the podcast. Sorry. Sorry. Like, <laughs> For those of you guys listening, I'm putting up an America sign because I love America. That's fine. Right. Right. So Tuk 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 scams. Yeah. <laughs> so the Tuk Tuk scam, what it is, you be trying to get a ride somewhere in Thailand. They be like, okay, cool. We'll take you on a trip. We'll show you around. I'm oh, sorry, not Thailand. Around Bangkok. Uh, we'll show you around. Take you to all these different temples and stuff. Uh, but we'll only charge you like ten baht. And you're like, what? 10 baht? That's super good. For all of y'all who are unfamiliar with the conversion rates, that's like 30 cents for somebody to drive you around all day. Right? The reason they do this is because, granted, the drivers are going to take you to your destination, but they're going to make a ton of stops mm. in the meantime. Why would you get a dog to sock right now? My bad. A all ton right. of stops. So, my bad. Everybody, listen on the podcast. If you all hear something that sounds like a dog slapping his face with a sock right now, that's because there's a dog slapping her face with a sock it's, right now. It's kind of hilarious I to watch. I kind of want to turn it around so they can see it. Mm, nope. She's, no, she's okay. back over here. But, 
They'll drive you around all day. You're like, what? 30 cents for me for you to drive me around all day? I'm with it. I mess with it. How at your boy? I'm all for the deals. Know what I mean? But you'll make a bunch of stops at places that you don't really want to go to. Right? They'll take you to obvious like scam uh scam temples, right? They'll make you pay to get in. Then they ask for donations. Uh, they'll take you to these things called Thai shops. And what it is, it's like a silk market or it's a chocolate shop or they're trying to get you to buy suits chocolate or shop. <laughs> whatever. They're trying to get you to buy suits or they're trying to get you to get this other stuff so they can get in, get your credit card information, get your money, uh, and then maybe not return on that investment that you just purchased. right? But the motive for the drivers is they get gas cards. So they get free gas incentives pretty much to take people to these other places. So if Carl and I are going on a trip around Bangkok and one of the drivers is like, hey, I'll drive you around all day. You don't have to pay anything extra. 30 baht. Let's go. We go to the Thai shops. I'll take you to the Grand Palace. I'll take you to Wat Pho Temple. I'll take you to all of these other places. But we're going to stop at these other spots first. Uh, they'll do that. And your trip that was only supposed to take maybe like 30 minutes ends up taking like four or five hours. And you didn't spend a whole bunch of money. True story. Uh, re re uh, a really quick aside. Um, it's not going to be as long as an aside, but y'all know what I'm talking about. A uh, soliloquy. Should I shave my beard? I've actually been thinking about it. It's getting hotter in Taiwan. And y'all see it, right? Should I shave my beard or no? All right. Just uh, put that in the comments. Let me know if I've shaved my beard. So an another type of uh, uh, more that. familiar travel scam that uh, you might even run into. Like when you travel to a different place and you want to find a tour, right? So you didn't pre-plan a yep. tour. You're like, hey, I'm going to get there. I'm going to find something. I'm going to find a tour agent that I want to go to and figure out how to get there, right? There we go. So okay. in certain places, uh, you can haggle, right? So in most Asian countries, or a lot of them, I want to say most. By the way, if y'all don't know what haggling haggle. is, that means you get to talk the price down. They yep. say, they say I'm going to give you 100. You say, I'm going to give you 60. They say, you give me 80. I say, I'm going to give you 65. They say 70. You say 70. Y'all shake hands. You got a new hat. Probably shouldn't shake the hands out. They're not allowed to like hand sanitizers and bathrooms in some of these places. But um, what, what I will say is, yes, haggling dirt is it. a skill. The key to haggling, before we get into like what to do when you're doing tours, the key to haggling is to start one-fourth of whatever they say. So they say 100, for example. Say 10. That's not one fourth, but twenty five. You know what I'm saying? Say twenty five, right? And then they say, "Oh no, that's too low." You did math Ninety. Like me just did. Thirty five. No, thirty five is too low. Seventy. Thirty seven, right? So you want you want to like if you have that time of energy, that's, you want to really work. That's not the to best the way. Place. That's not the best way of haggling. Absolutely. But is. that no, it's not. You a terrible haggler. That's why. I don't you, like that's why. That's, no, why. that's, you're not, that's why patience. you're not allowed. But when I haggle, to get the cabs and stuff haggle, in any place that we go I do to. It well. That's why you're not allowed to do that. Also, uh, one of the best ways to avoid scams, especially if you're doing it on transportation, know ask where for the going? meter. Uh, well, okay. one, yeah. know where you're going. But two, <laughs> ask for the meter. Like, turn the meter on because mo a lot of times, a lot of times, not all the times, not all the times, some places people will see, you're like, oh, look, you're a tourist. I'm not going to turn the meter on. How about you just give me this much money to take it, and I'll take you there. And you're like, okay, that doesn't sound like a lot to you. Because you're doing a currency conversion in your mind, but in all actuality, you're dramatically overpaying for whatever you're doing. Absolutely. Right? Like in Bangkok, honestly, you get around most places for like 50 baht. <laughs> Except you know, to the airport. Except to the airport. The airport is like 350 baht. But yeah, absolutely. It's like, like the key is to know where you're going. Yeah. Is to know where you're going. Always ask for the meter. And if, if you are booking tours, do a little bit of research before you go out to the field and find out how much they cost. Again, it takes like a second yeah. to Google. Tour of this. They'll give you like a few prices that pop up. Mm -hmm. Get like a rough average. Go out on the street because you usually yeah. find them cheaper there. But like that, that's a good barometer as to how much the maximum you should pay for a tour so that you know that you don't get overcharged. And exactly. This is anywhere in the world. It's not Thailand. It's not just Asia. It's literally anywhere in the world. They actually do have do, do things like this, especially yeah. in Europe as well. Yeah, so and I, I think, that's, I think that's really interesting that you brought up haggling as kind of one of those ways to avoid like being bamboozled. Uh, while you're out on uh, while you're out on vacation, because haggling is, I think haggling is really really important. It's part of a lot of cultures. We don't do it so much in America, uh, but haggling is definitely a part of many other cultures, right? When people talk down a the price, they'll negotiate a price until they come to some kind of mutual agreement. Um, True. But yeah, for tourists, man, being a tourist in a place, especially being a very obvious tourist. Some places they will try to take advantage of you. So I mean, I, you know, that's, that was a fair scam. Yeah. Shout out to you. High five. Uh, uh. It's also important, my child, to understand that uh, if you look like a tourist, people will treat you like one. Yeah. And, and, and that's not to say you should always know where you're going and always look like you're confident, right? If you're lost, you definitely should people always look like you're that. confident. Like, but, but like, if, if you go up to them, like, oh my gosh, that's just good. I don't know what to do. Oh my god, I'm stuff. so, I'm so, I don't, I'm. Oh, woe is me. 
Shout out to the gifts. Um, but uh, well, it's me. Then like people are gonna more more than likely gonna try. Oh, like it's the first time to take advantage of. It. Be the gift keyboard people that make the gifts. Their name, their name is actually Gift. Yeah, but why, who, why does that have to do with woe is me? Because they had a gift that says woe is me, and it's kind of funny. It's a gift for everything. It, not really. You can't shout them out. Okay. We're going to talk there about this There is not later. a Mari gift for, hey, you are not the father yet. Yes, what, it once is. Once that comes out, I'm, I'm sure it is. Else. No. Whatever. We'll figure out. We'll look it up later. We'll Google that later. We'll Google it later. So, yeah, so, right, so it's really important to look confident while you're traveling. Look And, and to look like you know what you're doing, even mm-hmm. if you don't. Look like you're like, hey, like you know I want to go doing. here. I got this much. He'd be like, Bam. nah, that's too low. Nah. All right, maybe it is, but how much is it? This. Nah, I don't want that. Right. All right. Then, like, you know, work with it. That's fair. Make it happen. Let's see. Other scams that you can avoid while you're traveling. One thing that you always going to be, again, yesterday we were talking about being a smart traveler, right? Absolutely. Know your travel personality. Making sure that you keep up with all this stuff. All these good things. When you're traveling, watch out for pickpockets. Mm. Watch out for pickpockets, man. Yeah. Somebody get you on, get your, get your pockets picked. What is something that we do all Ooh, the time? Oh, wait, that alliteration do is dope. Get it your pockets picked. Dope. That's Peter Piper picked by Pickle Peppers. But one, one thing, thing that we always do, do pocket whenever we get packs. pocket packs. You get out of the car, packs. first thing you do, pocket Wallet, packs. keys, phone. Phone. Junk. You got, you got pockets for a reason. Ladies, I know, I'm sorry, you all were not blessed with the best pockets. Which is, I don't, I don't understand why. Somebody needs to really come up with a women's clothing line with, with just big pockets. Mm. Honestly, you can just oh. buy like some small men's clothes and then just like just give them to women, or you can just buy regular men's. You know, what? women come in all shapes. Like, just buy some. Mo- get better pockets. Y'all I was, deserve I was pockets. Gonna say, like, y- y- y'all deserve just, better just pockets. Wear clothes but either way, pockets. either way, we just saying. Simple solution. All right, pocket packs. All right, check your pockets pretty frequently. You don't have to make it too conspicuous. You ain't got to look like you're reaching mm. down mm. into the bottom of your legs mm. trying to grab something. No, just do a quick mm. pat, pat, pat. Too conspicuous. Uh, got my stuff. Uh. Yep, pocket pack. So, so a pocket, pocket pack is like it's a quick way to make sure you got what you what you need in your pocket. Man, pack, pack, take, pack. take this off. You so look also, stupid. No, I don't. I look amazing. Come on. CP travels all day to Paul University. You could, you actually could avoid the need uh, for hitting the pocket pack by buying one of these <laughs> CP travels tote bags because instead you can do a tote tap, right? Tote Put tap. In that. Tap tap. Got all my stuff. Laugh look at that. One. Done. But also one, one one important thing to avoid getting pickpocket is to not have a bunch of stuff in your pockets. Like when we travel, when we go out. You don't need your house keys. You don't need your car keys. Mm-hmm. You really only need money. Credit card, identification, and your cell phone. And, and if you're stay in a hotel or hostel, keys. And all those things can literally fill in one pocket. Uh, and, well, and, yeah, I like to spread Unless you have the out. iPhone 6 Plus, in which case, that's your fault. Yeah, you shouldn't. You Why shouldn't get that big that. old phone. Why you walk around with your iPad right. Pro? <laughs> better walk away. Might, might <laughs> well. Get travel iPhone 4s. Number one, those phones don't break. I and know number this. two, nobody <laughs> wants them. <laughs> and they're small. And they're, they're, they're nobody wants the iPhone Right 4. in the crevice of your pocket. Crease, creasing them, creasing them down. iPhone 4 bricks and 9 latest. All All right, so what else? What else? Let's see. Uh, some places that are kind of notorious for pickpockets are obvious tourist traps, like tourist spots. If you go to the castles in Lisbon, right? It's that's around you. the city. Tourist, touristy area. There are little kids that will pickpocket you. Uh, walk around the, the streets of Rio. De Janeiro. I mean, oh, okay, girl. <laughs> <laughs> there will be pickpockets nearby. So again, keep keep your head. I'm not necessarily keep your head on the swivel, but you want to stay alert of your surroundings. Uh, what's another place? Any, any, place, any place in big Europe? Crowds yeah, big big and crowds. A tourist destination. Pretty much, just be be smart. In, be smart or, about whatever anywhere. you're doing. Hey guys, Be smart about whatever you do. People don't just steal in these kinds of the list. Yeah, people that's, steal that's, everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, hey. Hey, if you got it, if you got it and home. somebody else wanted, they might try and get it from you. So just make sure that you Real got talk. yourself covered. Yeah. Okay. Or travel with CP Travels because we are nature's best. We got your back because what we do, we got this special. These we got this special formation that we walk in. It's called the triangle offense. Okay. We put you in the front and then we stand in the back because if they pick our pockets, then they ain't gonna get nothing. You know why? Because we ain't got nothing. <laughs> we ain't got nothing but experience. Because we put everything and in our tote steal, bags. And you can't steal experience. <laughs> exactly. And we got everything there else that we need right here in these fancy CP Travels <laughs> tote bags that you can buy at cptravels.com. If you're watching this, listening to this on the podcast on iTunes, by the way, if you all haven't, subscribe to the, uh, to the podcast on iTunes. We give you our new episodes almost every day. So make sure you all check in, subscribe. Like it, share it with your friends, your grandmas. Share with share with the old people in your life, right? Older, so they can sit down. Older. Huh? older people. The old people. Anybody you consider old, share it with them, right? I know somebody, he's two years old. He old because he got older than they. 
number. So, Age. moving on to travel safety tips, right? So, something we really want to get into. It's really, really important. Uh, one of the things I know a lot of people, um, I know for me, in general, when I first came, and I went like, out to a club in a different came place, where? right? To Asia. Uh-huh. Uh, to, to, to Beijing, China in particular, right? It was, I thought, again, um, I, I, was, uh, I was fresh out of college. I was really cocky. I thought I was Now, when you were fat. Um, shut up. Uh, I thought I was tough, right? So I went up in the club, and in, you know, in some places, like it's actually okay, or it just happens a lot because it's really crowded. People bump into you, so you know, I'm in Chicago. It's like somebody bump into you, step on your shoes, like oh, time to fight. Like somebody's about to get these You're hands. So violent. Also, man. I learned when you travel, don't wear white shoes. Yeah, that's just don't. Honestly, and also, don't nobody care should, about your shoes. You probably shouldn't have white shoes to begin with. There ain't no place you need to be walking around with hey, no white shoes. Hey, on. Air Force Ones are good on, on any. Okay, day well maybe you get you some white forces, but that's about it. Because as soon as you, you got to wear them like one or two times, and then you got to retire those because you got to save them for that day you're gonna need. Exactly them for that day when you need to hit them, break out the third, the third try, and that third when that third time you put them on should be a quick walk to the trash. <laughs> right, so Talk it's like, out, so like, so one, one we're tired of Air Force, y'all grow up your shoe game. You really want to avoid, well, really avoid when you're traveling is, is getting into altercations of any kind. Yeah. If it's not blatant disrespect or if somebody's like not physically threatening you in any way when you're out in the club or you're just mm-hmm. out on the street, then it's, it, there's never any reason to elevate it to that level because exactly. more, you, more times than not, it's, it's a, a misunderstanding. Simple misunderstanding misunderstanding. Usually it's like some kind of, yes, or a mistake. Exactly, right? Some kind of mistake with the language barrier, other people don't get cultural differences. Mm-hmm. Right? Recognizing people's cultural distance. That's just general travel safety, like one on one. Like don't, everybody ain't like you. Don't start nothing, won't be nothing. Exactly. And prisons in different countries are not fun. Exactly. Prison isn't fun anyway. I mean, bro, I'm pretty sure prison's not fun, but I mean, especially not for a black person in America. But I mean, st- I mean, it might be kind of comfortable about, since saying. everybody that you know is there. <laughs> no, uh, everybody. I and know. you got this stupid America sign talking about it's safe. Why are you talking about travel safety? You tell me about America. What is wrong with you? America. What is wrong with you? You need help. America. <laughs> 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 That boy ain't never been arrested in his life. Talk about prison not this. Look, no, I seen no eyes. zero people in jail. I seen eyes and I watched all, every all season of Orange is the New Black. Comes up, right. right. And it was like seven black people in that whole thing. Shout out to Black Cindy and Suzanne. Oh, geez. So, yeah, so it's, so it's just like yeah, when you go abroad, you don't want to get caught in any prisons or get any altercations mm-hmm. unless you absolutely have to. And I'm not saying let somebody walk up to you and disrespect you to your face. No, give them the hands. However, like, don't go to a different country trying to act the same way you act when you're at home because different places have different rules. I want to interject and just, just for a moment, everyone. Uh, just so we're all clear, CP Travels does not condone violence, <laughs> and we encourage you all to refrain from engaging in any kind of physical altercations domestically or abroad. Thank you. Boom. Another travel safety. Uh, when you go out to play, people are like, oh, do I need to have my passport everywhere I go? No. no. If you, uh, that's actually not something yeah. you need to do. I think you should, you should know where your passport is, obviously, duh. But most obviously, places... Always, always know where your passport is. All places have lock boxes. Lock your stuff up. Yeah. Remember the password. Nobody can break into a lock box except yeah. the password, so you should be the only one that knows it. True. Lock your stuff up, because there's nothing like... If you lose your passport abroad, there is nothing, nothing harder than, than getting, trying, a getting, getting a new one. And also having to spend all that money to stay in a place where you're very unfamiliar most so, more times than not. Quick question. Trying quick to make question. it work. Do you think checking in with the embassy... Is necessary in every place that you go to. If you are doing extended travel beyond that, extended travel is more than five days. You need to check into your local embassy. Why? Because something goes on and you're an American citizen. This is where being an American really pays off. Um, people will help you. They will look out for yeah. you, and then you will have a place to go for safety. And I would actually be willing to say, like, if you're going to be in a place, and maybe not even five days, but if you're kind of unsure about it, right? Because I know there are a few travel advisories going around to different places. If you feel like you might be kind of uncomfortable in place. You could definitely check in ahead of time. You like shoot them an email, shoot them a message, something. Just like, hey, I'm coming here. I'm going to be in this place. Just so you know where I am. I need somebody who got my back. Right. So uh, I think that's fair. And one thing you just brought up was really important is travel advisors, right? So what is when we say travel advisor? What does that actually mean? Like, like break it down real quick. All right. So. What a travel advisory is is pretty much like a tornado siren for travelers. Okay, so what a, you all know tornado sirens, right? They go off. They go, Don't sound anything like that. What else, you know, they gotta, I got to do, mm-hmm. the, do the sounds for them. It's the podcast. They can see, but they got to listen as well. Come on now. So uh, the alarm goes off. And it's like, hey, this could be dangerous. So get somewhere to get to safety, right? So a travel advisory, when they issue them from a place, is pretty much saying be a little bit cautious while you're in this place, right? It could be safe. It could be bad. I don't know. Keep, Do some research. Keep your, wits, keep your wits about you, right? Don't start nothing. Won't be nothing, obviously. Absolutely. 
But just so you know, we've had a couple issues with some stuff here in the past. Just make sure you stay safe while you're there. Be aware of that. Ironically enough, we were just well, we just finished up the second part of our Pay It Forward year-long travel initiative uh, for lupus awareness and brain aneurysm awareness. And we were in the Philippines. And as we were coming back, America issued a travel advisory to people going to the Philippines because recently there was a German man who got into an altercation with some uh, some extremists. And he was beheaded. So he did. So yeah, they issued, he got into an altercation with some extremists. Exactly. They didn't go out and find a German man and say, we cutting people's heads off, right? So right. it was him engaging in something they should not yeah. have been. And he was also he was also like in a part of the a part of the the well the the collection of islands mm. uh, that is not as used to tourists. I'm not saying again, I'm not by any means justifying what was he doing. Absolutely like, not. Like no. But uh right, he was down there, he was not in a probably the safest place for tourists to be. Right. right. So, so again, it's just it's all about honestly when you go common sense. Use common but again, sense. man, it's so hard to say that because everybody know common sense ain't common. Like one thing I learned from living common this thing called common. life. But uh, so so here's here's you can find out well, about travel advisories. One, you can just Google it. It's right Google on Google. It. But Let's you really it. should do your research about any country you're going to before you go. Now, what what I do want to caution people against is that even though you see a travel advisory, you may say this place is known for this, or you see something on the news, or anything like that. That does not mean that it it's does not all, mean that you limits. that you absolutely cannot go. There's yeah. been so many part times I've told people like, hey, I'm going to Asia. I'm going here. I'm going there. They're like, like oh, my god, oh my god, it's so dangerous. Oh my what? god, they eat do- like all these they stupid eat- things. It's like, well, no, no. that happened one time. One like, time. There, there, are, there are so many you like, remember and amazingly what, terrible things happened in America. What was going on? What's yeah, stuff still going on in, like, in Indonesia a while ago? Because somebody went down there for like a long vacation or like some spring break or something. She got yeah. kidnapped, and it was like this huge travel advisory saying, like, Don't go to Bali. They're kidnapping everybody, they're kidnapping people, they know. hide your kids, hide your wife. Like all this stuff, like airplanes disappearing. Don't don't leave. This was the new Bermuda Triangle. They they were like, I was like, she probably whoever shouldn't have been doing what they was doing. They probably was not being smart. We do not advocate kidnapping. Again, okay, yeah, we either. we do not advocate <laughs> but kidnapping of anyone. Say, right. This is just to say you know, that you yeah. need that you make sure you are you know be using smart. common sense. Be uh, smart and being if careful you think, when you travel. If you think. It's gonna be dangerous. Probably shouldn't do it. Yeah, just don't put yourself in that kind it. of situation. Just being honest. Like, yes. I understand, we understand that some situations are unavoidable. There you go. Right, but if you're getting an inkling that you might be in something, or if you're really worried about a travel advisory, you know you could always go to that place later when it's a little bit safer. Right, because yeah. I mean. But don't not go somewhere just because you yeah. see one advisor that says somebody got beheaded, right? Because that's some scary stuff. Oh, somebody got that's their head chopped off. Like that would freeze people. I was like, well, I don't I mean, want to go there. Be- Why would I go somewhere where they're doing that? Quite as hell, what you think about it. People <laughs> quite as hell have been beheaded yeah. on every country. You really think about it. And also, uh, you guys watch the news Y'all in America. Remember France? And all they play on the news is somebody got shot, somebody got kidnapped, mm-hmm. somebody somebody's shoe came off, right? I'm just saying, like, you if, you, re- there, if so. you was really worried about beheading, you should probably just avoid all of Europe. I don't know. Why would you avoid all of Europe? France? They invented. They have a machine there. It's a French machine. It's called the the guillotine. Oh, that's pretty. That's not really cool, but it's cool. Yeah. it's cool in video games. They chopped right. off people's so, heads. Don't believe. Don't believe. Don't believe what 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 you see on on for movies on Taken. Ain't nobody trying to take you. Don't nobody really care to be honest with you. Um, but uh, those things again. Those things we have. We understand that. We want to be sensitive to that. However, True. Uh, True. like if you go out and you have your wits about and you and you practice safety. And you follow the rules that we just laid out for a lot of them, then you will be safe as you travel. You will be safe. Again, it's just a matter of being smart. And every well, every country we've been to so far, of, a little bit of uh, have tourist safety police. Those are one of your biggest yeah. resources as well. That's actually a really, really good thing. And I wish that they had more of them in America. But for most countries, they actually do have tourist police. Right? These are law enforcement agents who specifically speak. Or for the most part, they speak English, and they're able to help you if you have a problem. Uh, when we were in the Philippines, we were down by Alona Beach, and we saw a couple of people get into an argument with someone else over paying the fare on a taxi. They were like, we paid. He was like, nah, y'all didn't pay. They were like, yeah, we paid. So the police officer was there literally just to solve this kind of conflict, right? It's just something small like that. Make sure that you have designated officers. Actually, it's really, really helpful, and it's very, very comforting uh, when you're out and you're traveling about the world. Yeah. You know what else? I think general travel safety, keep up with your stuff. Like we say, keep up with your passport. Make sure you know where your passport is, but keep up with all your other stuff too. Uh, me, I still get a little bit nervous sleeping in airports. I'm not trying to go sleep in the airport, wake up with all of my bags stolen, my kidneys missing. I don't know what's going to happen, right? So usually if you could travel with a buddy, that's great. But if you have to be a solo traveler again, 
Keep up with your stuff. Know where your stuff is. Make sure you're not just being like, oh, look, I'm going to leave my bag with all my expensive stuff right here in the middle of the airport. Let me go walk around and go see what's going on. Like, no, nah, be, like, be, be smart about what you're doing. Okay? That's it. And you stay in hostels, hotels, all that stuff. Yeah. And a, and a lot of things related to travel safety are related, right? So when we say don't have that many things in your pockets, don't bring that many things, that kind of is a direct, re direct reflection of how you pack your bags, yep. what, what you bring with you when you come and travel, mm -hmm. how you want to travel when you're actually going out and doing things, right? So if, you, if you're just going out and you're staying at a resort, that's fine, right? You're going to be in one location for the entire day. You ain't going nowhere. It don't matter what right? you bring. But if you want to maximize your travel experience or see if you travel, there's you some things get out, you need to be aware you of. Stuff, uh, yeah. just, you know, and and just, just to be mindful of, right? So Copy some things you see on TV, bags. those things do happen, but there are ways to avoid that and the things you need to be knowledgeable about, but don't let that limit you or prevent you from traveling. Cognizant. Yep, I like that word. So I to see. Just like my name. Boom, 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 Shh. Dog, that's not how you do that's it. How it goes. Hey, rim shot. Stop I, this. That's, that that's how it goes. wrong. That's how it goes, and you guys. do it wrong all the time, and I hate it. Mm, that's the best way to do it. No, it's not. Patented. The wrong way? Copywriting that. Uh, all right, so uh, at this like point, we want to take any, any questions that come in. If you guys have any questions for our viewers, join us on my live stream. Uh, anybody listen on the Feel podcast, free to feel free to send them to us. Comment to us. Let us know what's going on. Let us know what's going on. Uh, we know it's kind of early. I'm going to tell y'all more stuff. About travel safety? Yeah. Are we missing anything? What's the, I feel like we're missing like a really I do feel like we're thing. missing some stuff. Uh, let's see. Travel safety. You know, we talked about safety in terms of like relating it to being aware of what's around you. What about like personal safety? Like make sure you're taking care of yourself. You want to keep yourself safe. Things you travel with. Band-Aids. Oh, man. First aid kit. They have small little first, first aid, aid kits. Yeah, I cut my finger mark. today yeah. playing with a cup. Yep. Don't ask me. 110% your fault. Don't oh, yeah. ask me. I had even had, I was playing with the cup. The cup wasn't even broken or nothing. It was broken. It was the bottom of the cup too. I didn't cut my finger playing with a cup. I was just holding it, cup. I did Someone like this. Take that up for you. I did like this. Yeah. yeah okay. Check me out. Nice. You made me wash it too. It's done. It's done the whole time, man. Was, yeah. Right. So bring bring, bring personal safety. Personal items. safety Those are really stuff. Important. Yeah. What's that, what are some personal oh. safety things that you need? Um, allergy medicines. Epi. If you're allergic to stuff yeah. like me, I should probably have an EpiPen, but Luckily, I'm able to avoid all of my allergens, uh, and I'm usually to fruit. Easy, uh, yeah, I'm allergic. To, I'm allergic to most fruits and penicillin. So and penicillin. So it kind of makes it hard for me to find like some kind of medicine. But <laughs> allergy medicines, prescriptions, vitamins, inhalers, inhalers, epipens, band aids, rubbing alcohol, neosporin. If you go, actually, yeah, don't bring rubbing alcohol. That's also very now, that, That's a bad idea. Don't bring. Don't be. You can't get that onto an airplane. You can't carry it on. I redact that. I redact that from the previous mm -hmm. list of things. Let's do that. My bad, y'all. Uh, what else? Other things that you should take? Shower shoes. Like I'm a huge germaphobe. Hey, if you don't want to put your hand feet, sanitizer, some, there we go. Shower shoes and hand sanitizers. Okay. Hey, I know. I know. Safe. It seems like it's a lot of things to pack, but you get you one of those little small. It has all travel that in one bag. travel bags. Yeah. From Walmart. Two well, I would say Walmart, Target. Uh, if you're already overseas, you can go to honestly like any little convenience store. You get like Costco's one, one of those really, really, really little small ones. Get you one of those things. Got all your stuff oh, in it. Please, that you please, yeah. please don't draw necessary attention to yourself by not packing deodorant. Because man, ain't nothing like being man. on the beach and being super funky and hot. If so, I see somebody out some and they smell bad, because you know when you you see people when they smell bad, you like, oh no, you stink. You look like you stink. That is just mm -hmm. so rude. Yeah. No, it's but true. It's you ain't ever seen somebody who look like they stink? Mm. Mm. I'm looking at one right now. Mm. Stop, stop it's mad, I looked up. Yourself. I looked up at this one trying to look at you. I was like, ooh, that guy's handsome. They're looking at himself in the podcast again? You got to start doing that, baby. I can't, man. I can't, I can't help it. But yeah. I mean, I think that, that honestly is a general travel safety tip. But also, um, the, the, the last, I think, I think one of our last points we're going to make about travel safety again. If you have any questions, feel free to tune in. Um, before we get out of here, guys, is print out all of your itinerary information. That that means your flight tickets. That means where you're staying, addresses to where you're staying, all that. Um, travel times to make get there. Because sure again, there's nothing like fumbling through stuff when you're trying to get somewhere and you end up losing More something. Frustrating, yeah. Uh, people like, they see that you're fumbling through things like, like and things sometimes they will, spiral out. Again, control. sometimes people will try to take advantage of you. But like Be we prepared. said, like we said before. There are more good people in the world than there are bad. And if you really need help with something, it's okay to ask. We're not giving you all these tips and saying avoid scans and telling you all these warning stories, trying to freak you all out. But it's real. 
All right. It's Boy, real. You, you gotta know. take you Boy, gotta take you the bro. good with the bad. You gotta take the the hot with the cold. You gotta take the 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 scissors with the dustpan. So y'all know what I'm talking about. And also uh, another thing. This is actually the last with thing. The I promise. Do not rely on your cell phone. You know what? Batteries die. When Batteries I say die print things all out, the time. print them like, oh, I got my cell phone. I'm good. No, because if, what, what if you lose your charger? It falls out. It breaks. What if you didn't bring it? What if you didn't bring a, a little charger thing? Yeah, and you a you in London? They got them little circle plugs. Yeah. And you got the square plugs. You ain't got no uh, charging adapters. What if? What you go do? God forbid your 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 what flight gets delayed for a whole day, do. and you got to sleep in the airport, but they ain't got no charges for they your ain't phone. No charges in the airport. Then what? Right. So you have, you have to be you, for whatever you happen to be transferring through Malaysia. Your phone dies. You stuck in the outdoor terminal. They got an outdoor terminal. They ain't mm-hmm. got no doors in it. And it's got it's got like a McDonald's, but it's hot and it's small, and it ain't got no places for you to sit because everybody in there sleep all the time. That's the only McDonald's I've ever seen in my life that ain't had no seats. People just <laughs> sitting on the floor and they were asleep. It was crazy. I was befuddled. So in that situation, you you would need to have an external charger. There were no outlets and not be dependent on your cell phone. Exactly airport. right. And also, sometimes some airports don't have Wi-Fi. Still, I know. So, Sounds and crazy. Some of, them, some of them do have Wi-Fi, but it's terrible Wi-Fi. Super slow. Or you have to pay for it, or so many people are using it that you it might as well not. That be bandwidth Wi-Fi. is not popping. I ain't never seen somebody. I saw somebody have to plug up their phone one time to the uh, to the Wi-Fi in one country. <laughs> they plugged it up through an Ethernet cord. They had dial up on their phone. You had to call the Wi-Fi company to be like, "Hey, could y'all turn this on on my phone?" They were like, "Yep." And as soon as he said, he was like, "Ah!" <laughs> it was a massive phone. So again, we hope you guys have enjoyed <laughs> listening to You're our. Like, I was supposed stories. to use my phone <laughs> and the internet at the same time. Just dial up. Be safe out there, guys. <laughs> Travel safely. If you need any more tips, questions, comments, or concerns about traveling, we're always here for you guys. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, once again, I'm Carl. <laughs> I'm Patrick. <laughs> we got CP Travels. Squaw! Bye, guys. You got to hit the wild, the wild Fetty Wops.